Hey guys, today we're quarantined with coaches. I got Kevin Bull as head coach of the University of Wisconsin Whitewater. Uh, he just finished his fifth year there. Uh, I've been with him now for three years. And uh, Kevin, you know, one of the things I, I want to bring you on is, you know, you obviously have a ton of experience uh, now, five years as a head coach. And how did you, you know, when you took over uh, for a program that, that had success already, you know, um, how did you take over that program, Whitewater, and, and uh, keep that success, but also make the program your own? Yeah, that's a great question, Tim, to be honest with you. I mean, it really starts out from uh, really kind of the beginning. Um, and we're, we're in the playoffs in, in 2014, and um, Lance um, had decided to go to Buffalo. And um, he offered me an opportunity to go to Buffalo with him and, and really the whole staff ultimately um, was going to go to Buffalo. And, um, but I also knew there was an opportunity to potentially stay here and be uh, the head football coach of, of really a storied program to say the least. And, um, you know, but then I also know as a coach, uh, they always say never take, uh, never follow a legend. You know, Lance Leifold won 100 games faster than any in the history of college football. Think about this stat. In the history of college football, Lance Leifold had 100 victories faster than anybody. And so, you know, do you really want to follow that guy? And uh, my first thought was no. And to be honest with you, I was pretty confident I was probably going to Buffalo. Um, but uh, um, Lance gave me 24 hours. And within that 24 hours, I realized something. This program wasn't built on the premise of winning national championships. Um, this program was built on our commitment to the process, commitment to teaching our coaches, teaching our players, and, and um, grinding on that process of getting better academically, getting better athletically, and most importantly, getting better as a man, and as a human being. And um, that's when I came to the realization that, no, I wasn't going to take the chance to stay here. I was fortunate. Uh, Amy Edmonds, our AD at that time, named the interim um, head coach. And, and, uh, but that question still stuck with me in, in the sense of um, how do you follow this guy? How do you do that? And, and um, I knew what it was all about. It was all about getting better every dang day. And, and Lance had his method of how to do that. Lance is an amazing, amazing, um, in my 30, over 30 some years of coach, and I quit count, it's, it's past 30 and I don't need to count anymore. But, um, you know, Lance um, really is an amazing administrator. His ability to be able to find talented coaches, find talented human beings, to bring them into the program, to administer that program, to build an environment that, that allows those great coaches, those great players to flourish. And, and um, but that was his way. His way was an, as an administrator. And for me, I knew that was not, that was not my identity. Um, and, and it took me some time though, Tim, I'm gonna be candid. I, I don't wanna sit here and say that in 2015, I knew my exact identity of how I wanted to be a head coach. I thought that that was actually where I made my mistake is I thought I was trying to find my identity as a head coach in, in all reality. And it wasn't really until um, 2017. And that was a rough season for us. And, and we didn't make it to the playoffs. And, and um, that was the greatest growth for me because that was when I truly came to the realization for myself, it wasn't about finding a new identity as a head coach. It was really being true to what my identity always had been. And, and my identity always has been to be a teacher. And, and I went to college to be a teacher. I got my license to be a social studies, history emphasis, poli sci minor. You know, I was go be a high school coach and, and high school teacher. And that is something that I've always been attached to. Even in high school, I, I loved teaching people how to do other things. And I took great um, satisfaction in that. And really 2017 is when I said, and I came to the true realization of who I am in, in the sense of as a head coach, it's no different whether you're an assistant coach, whether you're a doctor, a nurse, a teacher, 
what is your identity and know what your identity is and live through that identity make your decisions through that identity and and my identity is as a teacher and so am i different than lance yeah i'm different than lance in how i approach being a head coach because i'm being me lance is being lance uh nick saban is being nick saban uh you know whatever you know um you know larry kindbaum is larry kindbaum you know what i mean and and they live their identity and who they are as a human being but are we teaching the same things not a question in the sense of teaching our kids how to do things right teaching our coaches how to do things right being a consummate learner and 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 learning what that has to be and so yeah, it, uh, I'll be candid as heck, man. It took me time. It took a rough season for me to really figure out um, who I am as a head coach. I, I always knew who I was. I just didn't make that true connection um, prior to that. And, and that, that is the scope, how I look at everything, whether it's recruiting, whether it's uh, academics for our players, whether it's day-to-day -day contact with our players, everything will be looked through those lenses. You may have already answered this, but I'll ask it. Um, you know, year five just concluded in December. We made a run to the to the Stag Bowl. What did you learn in year five that you wish you had learned in year one? Well, you know, I think uh, there, there's a million lessons every year. And I think that, you know, going back to being a teacher, that is what you are. You are a consummate student. And, and um and I think I could go through a list of, of things. If I had to pick one in particular, um, it really, uh, to me, the greatest learning lesson of this past season, we pride ourselves on our process. We pride ourselves on grinding and on um, knowing what we're teaching, teaching with confidence, keep teaching it with detail, executing it with confidence and detail, and, and our process of day-to-day -day of what we do. The one, the biggest learning lesson I had was really this year, during, during this year, really came after our 10th game of the season. We lost our 10th game of the season. We were undefeated. We were 9-0 and going into that game. And um, after that game, I was pretty disappointing. I mean, we're, you know, shoot, we're like, are we going, are we going to make it to the playoffs with a 9-1 record? That's it. And, and uh, we didn't get the automatic qualifier in our conference. And, um, but we did. And I tell you, it was amazing that week 11 of the season, first round of playoffs. When we came back on that Monday, we didn't practice on that Monday. There was a sense of mission, an uh, even higher sense of mission. Let's put it that way, because our guys are pretty disciplined. Our guys are pretty focused and locked in. There was a higher sense. There was a higher sense in week 12. There was a higher sense in, in how we practiced. Um, we have GPS units, and we don't put them on all of our players, but we have them on 12 of our players. You could see the level of intensity of what we were doing on the field was even higher. Now, I'm going to tell you this with all, uh, you know, in all reality. Am I saying we practiced poorly or we, we, we lost our intensity during the course of the season? Heck no. We did not. Our guys were disciplined. The thing that I did learn, though, is our level of intensity, our level. Of, it's like this. This is probably my best analogy. Hey, if a guy benches 300 pounds, that is his PR. Yep, that's his PR. Well, what's his goal? His goal is to hit 305. His goal is to hit 310 to get a new PR. That is what you train. And you train to push your PR and, and get a new PR. And that's what we did. We did. That game, that loss, gave us uh, really an attitude of something to prove individually. Individually. E each person uh, on this team made a decision after that day of what am I going to do Monday? What am I going to do Sunday, tomorrow? You know what I mean? After that game. What am I going to do Tuesday when I go on that field? And, and there was a greater sense of urgency. There was a greater sense of something to prove individually, which ended up being obviously collectively because we're all together at this same moment. But the key thing was is that each individual made that decision, that sense of motivation. And we found a new PR. That's my point. 
that is my point, is we found a new PR uh, of our level of process, um, weeks 10, or excuse me, weeks 11, 12, and 13, and, and into the national championship. That to me was an amazing lesson because you would you often think, hey, we hit a level with our process, we're grinding hard, we're pushing hard, we're doing the right things, we're maintaining that intensity. It isn't about maintaining. It is not about maintaining that level of process. It's just like getting a PR on your bench, man. Um, let's PR our process. Let's raise it to another level. And our kids did, our team did, I'm terribly proud. It was, it was really proud of, uh, of of our crew. Awesome. Can you, can you talk a little bit about the learning culture that you preach uh, in our program? It, it's, it's, um, this is our mission. This is truly our mission. Our mission is to establish the best and, or excuse me, I got to think it over in my mind is to continually build the best learning environment possible the best learning environment, to build it, constantly build it. So many times people think um, a, a program like Whitewater and, and the traditions that we've had, that it's about maintaining. Oh my God, main, maintenance is complacency. Maintenance is complacency, Tim. It's about striving to build. How can I, you know, if, if I'm Ryan Cortez and I'm the defensive line coach, what can I do individually with players? It's not just teaching your D-linemen. It is Ryan Cortez trying to figure out how to motivate, how to teach better individual technique to Mackenzie Belonga now. And, and how can he do a better job? It's not just teaching your room, it's individuals. It is teaching individuals. The greatest teacher establishes relationships with each player and you establish a relationship that shows that you care about their personal success. When you can do that as a teacher, students will thrive. Students will thrive in that environment. They, they, they will thrive. They will, Mackenzie Belong and I, today will get better at his personal, um, you know, uh, we talk about a 1%. Every time one of our players goes on a football field, they know what their 1% goal is. What may that be? For uh, offensive linemen, it might be, hey, getting the perfect bucket step on our outside zone stretch. That might be his one goal that day. But when you as a coach can give him that information, can show him what he needs to do, can motivate him, and ultimately the greatest motivation is by you showing you care. You care about him. Now, a lot of times people think, that sounds fluffy, that, oh, geez, they must be all rainbows and sunshine at, at UW-Whitewater. No, it, it's just about being real. It's just about being real with kids. If it's wrong, it's wrong. If it's right, it's right. If it's perfect technique, it's perfect technique. If it's ah, short, six inches too long, then it's six inches too long. It's just about being real. Give them the information. Show them you care. Give them the detail. And, and be real with them. And, and when you establish that type of information, kids are getting the correction. They're willing to accept the correction. Why? Because they know you as a coach care individually about their success. And they see the value. They see that when you as a tight ends coach correct them on that, his stance, how it, wow, that, that really helped me um, get my hips lower and come out on that block, combination block on the tight end, or on the defensive end, excuse me. Um, they, they, that's what it's all about. It's, it's not about just teaching your room. It's about teaching the individuals within that room and each coach knowing what it takes to teach those individuals in your room. And ultimately to do that, you got to have a relationship. You got to know who they are as a human being. You got to know what their goals and objectives are personally, as well as what they are on the football field. You have to know what it takes to help them um, take that next step in their game. And, and it is all about the little detail each day. And it's about doing it one day at a time. That, that, that's ultimately what it is. It's about, yeah, you get that whatever um, wide receiver better on your top of the route today. Um, 
but you got to make sure he owns it again tomorrow. You got to make sure you motivate him again tomorrow and you show him that you care. Um, and, and, uh, and yeah, that, that's how you build a learning environment of people that understand what it's all about. And the beautiful part is that when you as a coach model that ex, those experiences, and, and that's the way I look at it. When I hire coaches, I'm looking for coaches. The number one and most important thing I'm looking for in hiring an assistant coach is, do they have the identity as a teacher themselves? That is what I want. Why? Because that matches me. That matches me. That is consistent philosophically with me. And so kids have this consistent environment that the coaches model. And then the coaches, this is the beautiful part of coaching. And this is the wonderful part of coaching. Kids start modeling that. Kids start modeling that. So Jared Zausch, one of the fantastic tight end, you coach him. But Jared Zausch models what you teach and how you teach. He's grabbing that freshman and helping him with his stance. He's grabbing that other freshman and helping him with his first step on, on, on the 15 play or whatever it is. And it, it then you, you have this culture that then just continues to build within itself. And, and, and I, I, I even get leery of using the word culture, Tim. I, I think it's standard. It's standards. We set standards for ourselves, we demand it of ourselves, we demand it of others, and we just hold people to that standard. There's a consistency to it. It keeps life simple, and it's obviously very productive. I love that, that was a great answer. Um, I wanted to talk about cultivating leadership. Um, I, you know, I think back to that 2017 season, um, obviously we didn't start out the way we wanted to, and um, you know, we were one and three at that point, and we had a tough slide ahead. I mean, we had three or four top 25 teams still left on the on the schedule. And that's a typical schedule for us, right? And our players had uh, – our senior and our upper class leadership had every reason to maybe pack it in for the year, right? And, and yet they fought and fought and fought. Um, and we end up finishing the season on a six-game winning streak to, to salvage a seven and three season. And, and since then, I've been really studying leadership because I was so impressed with that senior class. And I think what we do here, at cultivating leaders, you know, is tremendous. Can you talk a little bit about how you have cultivated leadership in this program? You know, I mean, and, and, you know, the first thing is I think what we just got done talking about, the role modeling, is, is we demand our players, um, our upperclassmen coach and teach in the same manner uh, that we teach and coach. And, and we're setting that standard as coaches, but we're also setting that demand on. And, and it, it's so many times I know uh, – letting players know that that is a requirement that they teach. It's also coaching them to do that. It's easy as a coach at times to, you know how it is, Tim, you're running a drill and you see a player make a mistake and you can go correct him. Yeah, you can, you can, you can knock that correction out in a heartbeat. Or as a coach, you can say, Hey, Steve, go talk to Jared Zelsch. Jared's going to get you corrected on, on that step. And what you're doing then is you're making Jared have to do that. Now, Jared's past that point. We, we don't need to make him do that. But you can now do that for, you know, so for example, I'm using your personnel group, um, you know, Mike Coates. Mike Coates, young tight end for us. But you can now say, Mike Coates is going to square you away. Now Mike's looking at you going, oh, well, yeah, I, I, I get to coach him now. And, and you're putting him in that position to coach. And that builds, it's, it's little things. It's all about the little things. It's, it's putting Mike Coates in a position to teach. It's putting my, um, you know, Michael Brentes in a position to teach. It's next year, a young man that was a freshman for us this year, Zach um, Sherman. Next fall camp, put Zach Sherman in a position to have to teach and to have him build those skill sets in combination uh, with confidence. I mean, the first time you do that to him, he's going to be startled. But you warn your players. You let them know, guys, we are going to teach. 
it's I am not the only tight ends coach, or you're not the only tight ends coach um, on this pro in this program. Yes, you are the lead one, um, but those other guys are going to do that. What else do we do? Um, I, I know individual meetings that I'll have with all of our players, whether it's at the end of spring spring ball, which we don't have spring ball this year, um, but um, even after our postseason uh, one on one meetings that I'll have with players. Um, it's not a long meeting um, that I have with them. I mean, we do an academic check to make sure, and, and we already know where guys are at, but it, it's, it's my opportunity to talk, uh, talk individually um, with guys on academics. Um, but then the next piece is this, where are you at as a leader? Where do I see you at as a leader? What is your next step as a leader? And, and, and so, I mean, putting the demand of them individually um, and, and letting the Zach Sherman, who's a freshman last year, who's coming into a sophomore year, Zach needs to start coaching. He needs to start teaching. He needs to grab a guy and correct him when he can, without emotion, with respect, showing that you care, building a relationship, all in the same manner that you do it. Does that make sense? And defining what that means so that players understand it. Now it's important in your position meeting to be able to say to the freshman, hey guys, do you understand my coach is gonna correct you? Do you understand Zach Sherman is gonna correct you? It's not about him putting you down. It is not a put down. It better not be a put down. If, if, a, if a player put a guy down in a correction, then that's your job to coach him up on being a better leader on how to be a teacher. And that's why you hear me use, about, use the term teacher all the time, is that the connotation of a teacher as compared to a connotation of a coach. In our society today, coach is some big fellow with a great sweat, gray sweatshirt on and says coach across the front, and whistle and yelling and screaming and, and, and being out of control and chewing butt all day. Yeah, there, there may be times, there may be times, but um, it ultimately comes down to teaching and, and teaching our players to role model that teaching and, and by us setting that standard for ourselves, our players will do that to each other. And what ends up happening is you have a locker room of a bunch of guys that love each other. Because in all reality, the greatest sign of love is someone that can give you a correction. And sometimes it's a correction you don't want to hear. And, and a lot of that is the truest sign of love. When somebody is able to come up to you and say, say to you, give you a correction on something um, where most people might be, oh, I don't want to do that because I don't want to hurt their feelings. Um, that, that is the greatest sign of love. I mean, that is what parents do. That is what the great teacher does in school. The great coaches do. They give you the correction and they're real with you. Just be real. Don't have to tie emotion to it. And, and, and um, just be real. And uh, that, that helps develop players. Awesome. Well, we're going to wrap up here with a, a little bit of a rapid fire. Um, you know, I know you uh, pretty well here, so I try to pick some ones that, that I think are, you know, really interesting about you. Uh, your favorite musician band or group? You're all, you always have music playing in, in your office uh, during the day. What's, what's your favorite musician band or group? ACDC, not even a question. Best band ever in the history of humanity. <laughs> Here's a curveball for you. What's the best – um, band group or musician that one of your sons has uh, put on your on your phone to listen to? This will shock you. Um, Eminem. Eminem, you listen to his words, man, it's deep. It is deep stuff. I love Johnny Cash. I think he's our modern day Johnny Cash. There you go. That's a, that's a heck of a comparison there. Uh, one thing I think most of us can say about you um, without really talking to you is that you like pizza. What, what's a, what's a go-to pizza topping for you, the pizza in general? I love pizza, man. So, I mean, it, I, I, I don't know if I have, a, I've ever met a pizza I didn't love. Um, I got to go with sausage. You can't ever go wrong with a sausage pizza. You just can't. Uh, you're one of those weird types that uh, gets up early in the morning and runs. Uh, how many miles a week do you, you, you usually accumulate? I'm not very good at math. Uh, somewhere around um, probably a little over 12 miles a week. That's crazy. Uh, 
Longtime defensive line coach, longtime defensive guy in general. Uh, best pass rusher of all time. Are you talking the NFL or are you talking that I've coached? Uh, well, how about both? Can we get both maybe? Wow, best pass rusher of all time. And I'm going way back on this. And he, he was crazy. Um, there is not even a question. Uh, Alan Page was a beast. They legalized holding just because of him. The guy was unbelievable, played for the Minnesota Vikings. Um, so I, I'm a Vikings guy. I grew up in Minnesota. Best pass rusher I've ever coached. That is tough, uh, but I got to give it to Lusant Manette. He, he, he could, he, um, QBs knew his name. There you go. I knew you'd pick a Viking. Uh, who would have guessed that? Those Minnesota roots coming through there. Coach Bullis, thank you for taking time out to join uh, Quarantine with Coaches. Appreciate it. Thanks, Kim. Really been a pleasure.